morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to video message number 29. Pair of panties. That's what we eat. The Beezer. Maybe you got off on the wrong foot because what were you doing in the produce section? I was trying fruit on. The juice is loose. Listen up. The ratings just came in for last month. We are number one. We just grabbed every key demographic. Super duper. Yeah. 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 Super duper. That's nice. Way to go. Neato, gang. Yes. Boy. That is good news. Trip Morning Show. It is the 10th day of April, and I know you're probably thinking, damn, Corey Cove sounds a lot sexier and a little bit blacker today, but make no mistake about it. I am Max Fuller, a.k.a. Leonardo DeMax Brio, a.k.a. Samuel L. Maxson, and I am filling in today as Corey Hockey Sauce and Halvey. Get ready to head to freaking Las Vegas for the week. They'll have all types of good stuff for you tomorrow and Friday as they broadcast live from the Sin City. But in the meantime, the cast of thousands will try and fill the power shape, power trip shaped hole in your heart. And I mean, I guess any other holes you guys have as well. I yeah, mean, right, right, geez. Chris? Yeah, we, yes. you know, we don't ask too many questions. <laughs> we got Marty Galarnar coming in in a little bit. We got Ben Lieber joining us in about an hour. Marky Mark Rosen will be in the his house a little bit later as well. But right now, I'm lucky enough to be joined by the gentleman, John Creasel, and former NHL superstar and current analyst superstar, Mark Parrish. How the hell are y'all doing? Good morning, Max. How are we doing, guys? This felt really, really weird. To it did. first be up this early in the morning, <laughs> and, and to yeah, like to come in and, and and have the 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 weight of the power trip world on our shoulders. I know, right? We usually just get to come in and f round, kind of yeah. loose hips, walking <laughs> in, not caring how the show goes. But now yeah. it's all on us today, boys. Yeah. Well, you're the director. I know. Yeah. The job. <laughs> Typically, I'm yeah, I'm just the laugh track still. usually. <laughs> and I actually have to, actually, I'm excited. I finally get to talk. I finally get to. We finally get to air some thoughts. Chris. We do. It's about time. It's it about is. time. I think we've the, paid our dues. The people have been waiting. Yeah, <laughs> they have. And I don't usually get to hang out with y'all. We're all on, on different days no. usually. This is a pretty great. Greasy trio to start off the morning. And now my challenge will be leaving here realizing that it's Wednesday, not Friday. Oh, Anytime right. I'm on the show on a different day, inevitably as I'm walking by, people have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll, they're going to see, they'll be like, ah, that bomb blast really did rattle. <laughs> So, go, yeah, you too, John. Yeah. 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 Have a wonderful day. Yeah. <laughs> I believe the guys are planning on calling in in a little bit while they wait for their flight. So we'll hear from them soon. And, you know, I know why I'm not in Vegas with the crew right now. I just got back from Australia and New Zealand not that long ago. And Abbott made me put my ankle monitor back on. So I'm not allowed to leave the confines of 1600 Utica Avenue. I don't. My hair is pretty long. I don't have Rapunzel like hair, though. So nobody can come and rescue me. But why are you guys not in Vegas? Especially you, Chris. I've heard you are the life of the party in Vegas. Why are you guys not in Vegas? I had a very busy time at work. Also, wife and I are going to Milwaukee to uh, see Luke Combs. Oh, sweet. And so, Milwaukee, the Vegas of the Midwest. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Call. <laughs> I do like it there. It's This will be my maybe third, fourth time yeah. there. I like it. But um, yeah, so I would have been able to go to the to the power trip, Vegas trip for maybe one night. I would have flown out tonight after work, been on the show tomorrow, flown back. So it just wasn't going to work out. But yeah, yeah I, I yeah, I will be there that. next year, most likely. Yeah, I, uh, I one a uh, little bit of tough time for me since the uh, NHL playoffs are, are are gearing up here and the season's winding down. Uh, but uh, man, last month 
March, I was in uh, Napa the first weekend, and then we had the that state awesome. tournament. Napa was incredible. Oh, thank, sweet. thank you for, Nikki, for being a wine connoisseur. Uh, what a spectacular <laughs> weekend out there. Um, and uh, even if you don't imbibe, you can still enjoy. Napa's amazing. It's it's the food, everything. You, you can't, you won't miss out on anything in That's Napa. That's California, right? Yep, okay. exactly. Sweet. It's it Literally, it's awesome. You don't have to be a wine person to absolutely love Napa, Sonoma, that area. Uh, and then, yeah, working a ton out in New Jersey, and then we had spring break, just got back from Disneyland last week and to be honest with you hopping on another flight sounded like a nightmare (laughs) so yeah I just uh, casually you know gracefully as graceful as I could bowed out this trip are you guys big vegas guys in general uh, yeah. do you do you like vegas are you sick of the whole bit at this point or it's getting less and less awesome i feel like by the year it's Is it just getting bit, older just going there just, so much it might be just that i'm that i'm getting older this will my next trip and i haven't booked it yet i usually go three times a year Will be trip number 50 for me oh wow so Holy I've, wow, I've, I've gone Greece. quite a bit that is deep yeah. Yeah, yeah, I keep track. Diamond, have, uh, platinum. What? Where are you at with the with the uh, hotel mm-hmm. levels there? The uh, what do we mm-hmm. call those things? The rewards. Rewards. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Not not high roller level at all. I'll uh-huh. get usually I'll get free rooms through Wyndham or oh or yeah, whatever. The best. Yeah. So then yeah, of course. the ones from me going to like any of the MGM property, and they're they've changed their point system too. MGM properties have uh, they're on my S list. Now, yeah. so, oh, so I, I'm, well, I'm kind them. of a free agent. That so I'm fine. I, Venetian's probably my new one. They've been sending me some nice offers lately. Oh, okay, I'm trying to recruit you a little they, bit. They, there you go. They know it's <laughs> like the uh, the tampering period right. in NFL yeah. free agency. Sending you some nil. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they offer. There was the one was a slot tournament. Have you ever played in a slot tournament? No, I've actually never. Uh, Believe it or not, I've never gambled a single dollar at a casino. Wow. It's, yeah. It, no, good, I, I'm, good I'm just. Wow. That's I've just really been impressive. So broke my whole life that even when I went, I've been there with my boys a bunch of times. It's fun to go still. But even my boy one time gave me a $5 chip and he's like, come on, man. Like, I'll pay for you. I just went and cashed it in. I'm like, bro, that's, that's four McChickens <laughs> right there, yeah, my dog. Like, boy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm good I'm, at math. I've never gambled before. I want to, but I never have. And, and I'm not, it's funny. I, I'm not much of a gambler either, Max. Not because I never have, just because I've never won. Right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I've realized I'm a horrible at gambling just because I go to the cashier and just keep getting chips and never pay, get paid back. So you yeah. never had the rush of winning. No, only, I have like, no the, idea the what the, yeah, the agony of defeat. Uh, but but that being said, absolutely love Vegas. I mean, my, my wife and I, we, we love going out there. We like doing the shows. But, man, we're like people watching. I, what's not to love about Vegas? And, no, I'm nowhere near the 50 times Crease has. So I'm not even close to burnout about it. It's the the energy of the town. So awesome. Yeah. And so now I gamble plenty. I think my mo- the most enjoyable times are when I get to go with my wife and Tim and Cara or just my wife and I and going to a restaurant, going to a show. Yeah. When I go with the fellas, it gets out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's crazy but it's just you'll have these plans and there might be six to eight of us going to dinner. And it ends up being like Survivor, where yeah. by the end of it, there's some torches that have been put out. <laughs> right. And so right. now dinner reservations. And a couple of people got voted off the island Correct. as well from the yeah. bar staff. And there are some people that just got on a boat and paddled away. We have no idea where the hell So then we end up just kind of being like, okay, now there's four of us for dinner whose credit card was on the reservations because they might be getting charged $25 for the no-shows, all this and that. So, um I do enjoy the ones where I get out of the casino and I get to see more, get yeah. to go play a round or two of golf. Amen. Super awesome. So I, another thing that's one of the main reasons I like Vegas, so many people will be like, I hate gambling, so I never go to Vegas. No, you no, would. You there's something yeah. nope. for everyone. everyone. That's what I've heard. And yeah. the people watching is is elite, the, right? The, the, is you can't. You, yeah, it's Yes. Yes. And one of the, say yes. one of the fun, uh, <laughs> depending on the hour, is you go hooker hunting. Oh, yes. And it's just where it's, you're trying to spot them. Yeah, 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 I was just saying. <laughs> sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. And I'll, 
and now they don't approach me. They used to. I think it was during my first marriage they realized <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that a fellow was not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. car was parked in the garage yeah. with the tarp on it. It was never being used. Yeah. There was, you had that look in your eye. Yeah. They, they, could yeah. just, they could tell instantly. They, could, yeah. they, could, they, they smelled that new car smell. <laughs> you know? And uh, they would just. Just a magnet. And I know the deal. I'm like, no, no, no thanks. No thanks. But it feels good, though, right? It's It's, it's got to feel a little bit good. No, because I think they think I'm desperate. <laughs> and no, at that point, maybe I was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's not for them to call. No, yeah. for sure. But it's funny how there's that radar. And now there's like a force field around me. I can't, if I'm like, that is one. Let's see if I still, no, no. They just walk nope. by and I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? I'm invisible. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, my, one of my first, actually, I think it was my first ever trip to Vegas, my rookie year in Florida, 1998. Um, and uh, so we, we go to have our rookie dinner at the Brown Derby in the MGM Grand. And uh, I was going out and we would just go up, randomly walk out from dinner and go put whatever, a couple hundred bucks in, on blackjack, whatever, play and go back to the table or go back to the dinner. And and we we went in. I, I walk around the corner, go to the bathroom, and there are just these two smoking hot broads waiting for me to like talk to me after the bathroom. And I think I am King S at this point. <laughs> and, and these girls just come walking right back to the table. I'm like, oh, at a dinner table, and here this and that. And what? I thinking, yeah, I've got some serious game at this point. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then one of the older guys come to me, the cat, and he's like, Hey, Mark, you uh. You know you're going to have to pay for those two, right? <laughs> what do you mean? They were, they were waiting for me outside. The, oh, son of a... Oh, God, God dang it. I thought I was so cool for that. Like, just two couple smoking hot toys. I'm like, oh, my God, they're all over me. This yeah. is awesome. Maybe that is dang part it. of it, too. Maybe I don't bet as much as I used to, I'm thinking, too. Because they do pay attention to that stuff, too. Yeah. Right? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't play on the tables as often. And it's tough for them on a slot machine when there are six of us yelling at the slot machine. <laughs> Nice. I, I did have, I, it was my second trip to Vegas and my buddy's first trip. We went to a club. This is way back. This is circa 2003, 2004, I think. We went to a club, yeah. Tangerine at Rio. So Tangerine, that Tangerine at Rio. Yeah. That just sounds like it gets y- greasy. Yeah, it, it does. It did. We, two absolute dimes. And in the club, perfect. I go to buy drinks. Now, this was late, so I didn't have my full bearings. I I can't find my buddy and these two gals. And I'm like, oh, God, what the heck? So, and I'm looking and looking. And this is before we didn't, I don't think had, I don't think you could T9 text someone. Yeah. So it's like, lost, lost, yeah. I'm calling his phone. Yeah. Beep in his pager. Yeah. So I hammer the drinks. All of them. Well, yeah. I yeah. go back to the, I, I get a cab. I go back to the room and I go to, uh, I, we we're staying at the Excalibur, the good old days. <laughs> I take a nap on the couch or on the, on the, on the bed. Door busts open and there's an Australian guy. Oh. And he's like, hey, what? And I jump up because I'm like, I have to kill this man. <laughs> he's in my room. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Behind him is my buddy Tom and two. Prostitutes. If you right out of central cast, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh man. So I get up and I quick brush my teeth because I'm like, I'm going down to play dice. And I tighten up my bed and I say, if there's a wrinkle on this, you're gonna die. <laughs> he goes, all right. He's like, no problem. So I go downstairs. Shortly after getting on the craps table, my phone rings, and he's, I, yeah, Tom, what's up? The nerve of these bitches. <laughs> Like, What's up? They're trying to charge me for sex, and I was like, Stevie yes. Wonder yeah. would have told you these are prostitutes. He had no idea. So he had walked the whole strip back. He walked the whole way back. Two prostitutes are like, "Hey, do you want a party?" He's like, "I do." Yeah. Not knowing the code, oh, Australian man. guy is like, hey, mate, looks like you need some help. And he's like, yeah, we're going to party. And the guy's like, need some help? Yeah. Just the most oblivious knucklehead of all. Like, he's not one of my army buddies. Love him to death. Yeah. The street Just, smarts aren't there. Yeah. Right. And uh, so he learned a valuable lesson and then realized, too, because I, had, I went in the bathroom to brush my teeth, left my wallet out. Oh, when I got down to yeah. the craps table, wallet was empty. 
Damn. So they did get paid. Yeah. yeah. They, oh, they yeah. got their money oh, yeah. one way or another. Tom promptly went to the ATM and got me <laughs> the amount that I had yeah. in my wallet back. But yeah. Yeah. That's when they're That's, good at their jobs, though. Like, oh, yeah. I, I went to, I've never been to Vegas, but when I was in Cuba, I got approached by a prostitute and I also had no idea. She just came up to me in the middle of the street speaking Spanish, thicker than a molasses and peanut butter milkshake. Yes. <laughs> and she's just, I don't know what the hell she said, you know, but it's, it's, it sounds sexy to me. It's thick Thursday. Yeah, exactly. And she starts feeling up on my junk just right in the middle of the street. So I'm like, oh my just God. Just getting right down yeah, the brass yeah. tacks. I'm like, I'm, I'm the freaking man. Like, I'm the president of Cuba. I'm, I'm Fidel Max show up in this bitch <laughs> and and then it, it was it was so smooth that i didn't even notice that her pimp who was disguised as her brother quote unquote came and like blocked my friend's point of view and started distracting my friend and so this girl she's speaking spanish to me she starts holding my hand and she's like let's go and that's the only thing she said in english so i'm like i understand that let's yeah. go like let's get out of here and then she starts like um, she starts getting more animated and like kind of like plants her feet and she's like saying something and I asked the dude I'm like what is she what is she saying and he, she's like where's the money and I was like oh damn it she's a prostitute mm -hmm. and I was still gonna do it but then my friend was like oh my god what's going on and right. I got freaked out and I was like come on man you ruined the you ruined the moment my see up front they're, no, go ahead. They're, they're asking hey pay up front at least that's less deceiving right. than <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm still, there was no excuse. I don't think, I mean, they had a sign yeah. around their neck that said, <laughs> for hire. My, my, one of the, uh, my, my roommates, an old Boston boy, absolutely loved his escorts. Uh, <laughs> loved them. And, uh, escorts? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he would, he called and multiple times called for one. Fell asleep before he got there. Damn. Wake up, everything gone. Wallet, watch, multiple everything. Times. Multiple times. Did not learn Would his not lesson. learn his lucid <laughs> lesson. Went through three watches in one season. My God, <laughs> these weren't Casio watches either. No, they were not. <laughs> I'm not not asking you to snitch on anybody, Perry, but was that a was that a frequent occurrence in the with the, with your teammates, or was it just only like guys uh, like that? Hey, there was there was always a couple guys. Let's yeah. put it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave it with that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Power Trip Morning Show. Max Fuller, John Creasel, and Mark Parrish getting you started on the morning. We'll be joined by Marnie, Ben, and Rosie. Plenty to talk about in the world of sports as well. Anthony Edwards had a monster game last night. The wild season is basically over and the twins are only nine games into their season it already seems like it's over as well for them we got plenty to discuss we're here with you till nine it's the power trip a morning show right here on the fan the fan Welcome back to the Power Trip Morning Show. It is the 10th of April, but you might be thinking it's the first after hearing me bring it back from break, but it's no joke. Max Fuller here with John Creasel and Mark Parrish filling in for Hockey Sauce, Corey and Halvey as they get ready to head to Las Vegas. The Power Trip will be broadcasting live from Vegas both tomorrow and Friday. So even if you can't join them, make sure to tune in because those Vegas shows are always full of fun and chaos. Now, this morning, you guys, when I was getting ready for the show, you know, having my morning cup of existential dread with a side of coffee, <laughs> I, I was throwing the boots to myself, trying to get myself to wake up, you know, as one does. And I heard a bunch of cussing, screaming, and shouting outside. And, you know, that's not super out of the ordinary when you live in downtown Minneapolis. <laughs> it's pretty much uh, comes with the territory. <laughs> but it, I could hear, I could just hear someone just shouting, bitch, bitch, just over and over and over again. And I was like, oh, man, is, is Rosie outside recording his podcast again? <laughs> And so I went to the I went to the window and I see two girls fighting in the street and I shouldn't even say fighting because that's like an understatement. They were brawling, like throwing hands, throwing feet, throwing weaves. It was a heavyweight slugfest just in the middle of the street at 1 a.m. Was anybody else watching? Were there people around or was it just these two handling business? No, it was a whole crowd of people oh, okay. eventually. Like it started Throwing with just them. <laughs> yeah, right. Placing bets and everything. It ended up being a whole neighborhood affair. Everybody was watching. And, you know, like I've watched a lot of Jerry Springer in my day. I even went and saw Maury live one time. Oh, dude. Best, best moment of my life, by the way. <laughs> 
Yeah, best moment of my Great life. Great show. Great show. Was what? it a paternity test one? Yeah, I got, to see, got, to, be yeah. On yeah. Test got, got to see the paternity test and the lie detector test. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, yeah, dude. It was it was the best moment of my life getting to boo baby daddies live <laughs> and in person and seeing them actually run backstage and everything. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. it was the best moment of my life. But this this... I mean, this fight, I I'm, I can't get over this fight because normally like a street fight is, you know, like 30 seconds to a minute. They don't usually last they're, that yeah, long. They're pretty exhausting, actually. Yeah. When you actually do start throwing fists, you, you get tired fast. Right, exactly. You have more appreciation yeah. for the UFC and boxing <laughs> exactly. fighters out there. But this was like, I'm not even joking, like five to seven minutes. Like they just would not stop throwing hands there was even rounds basically like their friends kept separating them and they're like girls stop they go to their corner yeah. right. yeah. there was a cup right. man yeah. <laughs> they're getting advice <laughs> Gleason up the, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. the left hook is open the left hook is open I would weep. yeah and i just couldn't they they would get separated for a second and then they would just charge right back at each other it was unbelievable i i i, I felt like i was watching george foreman versus muhammad ali i'm like this might be they're calling like this is not just a normal fight. The endurance was Marshawn Lynch like. <laughs> I mean, I, I could not believe it, and it just it just got me thinking. You know, like have you guys, Parrish? I'm sure you've been into a million fights on the ice, but have you guys, either of you guys, ever been into an actual street fight? Oh Ooh, sure, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, days. I was gonna say not not since college, uh, <laughs> but 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 yeah, oh yeah. There was there was some uh, street fights that that we had in in uh, Saint Cloud, and that, thank God I wish I could remember his name. Throw him a little bit of credit. Uh, one of our buddies was uh, was a Golden Glove blo- boxer too. Oh, one of the baseball man. players. Yeah, and, and so, so he had combos. So and he was kind of, he was he was just this scrawny looking thing. Didn't look like much. And this is when I learned: do not judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Ever. And man, when he threw, I mean, they were lightning quick and he only had to hit people once and they were down. Like it was, and yeah, so that he was, he was always fun to have on our side. That's always my worst nightmare is picking a fight with a random person and then they like take a stance and you're oh, like, oh yeah. man, oh, not I this. effed up. Or yeah. they reach for the Smith and Wesson. <laughs> that, that too, right? yeah. Yeah. I can say back in my day, we used to just throw hands and I'd say most most fights like that end up on the ground. Yeah, yeah. It ends you're up wrestling being around, around it, yeah, punches, exactly. And then you're trying to get it to the ground, Where? and that's kind of how it. And most of the punches don't land; they're no. grazes or you know right. whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. That was pissed off. I was gonna say yeah. that, that that's the the scary feeling. What one of my uh, first fights in the NHL uh, was uh, kind of that same thing. Like, oh boy, did I pick wrong here? Uh, <laughs> and was and one, there's a lot of people watching. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> was uh, was your ass kicked on national TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Mike Keen in Dallas, and I knew he was tough, but he wasn't the biggest guy. I knew he could fight though, so I'm like, oh god, I could probably get a hold of his arm and. Will fall over and everybody will, you know, tap me on the shins for, 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 for fighting somebody tougher than I am. And he squared up with his left and I went, Oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't know how to, I can't grab that arm. That, that arm's bad. That means I have to go left. Oh, this is not going to turn out well. And I just, we kind of circled each other at center ice and luckily he hit me once in the side of the head and I went for a haymaker that was about a foot and a half over his head because you can't throw less if you're not a lefty. Right. It just, yeah. the, no, the, the, it's not there. It doesn't yeah. work. No, it doesn't. There's, there's, yeah. The coordination just doesn't work. And, and we kind of fell over and he died laughing. <laughs> uh, he's like, tap me on the chest as he's laughing as I'm getting up. And yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's a horrible feeling when all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm outgunned here. Yeah. Instantly. And I was like, I just need to survive this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you, was that, did you ever just completely get your ass kicked by someone to the point that you didn't want to start a fight with them again? Uh, yeah, once in, in, uh, my, my first fight in, uh, major junior, uh, <laughs> it, w- it was my third game, uh, in Seattle in the Western League. And, uh, we were destroying Tri Cities, Scott Gomez's Tri Cities. Um, and, and it was like six nothing after the first period. So somewhere in the, in, in the beginning of the third, I was the new guy. So nobody knew who I was or anything coming from college hockey. You guys were leading. We six were nothing. leading six nothing. And we're, we're facing off right in front, right, right in front of the bench. And I'm the right winger. And so my butt is literally against the boards right in front of our coach. And this big guy, like all of a sudden comes on the ice and he's, he's, he ends up next to me. <sighs> And a puck drops, and he turns to grab me, and I hear the coach yelling, go, go, go. I'm a little shocked because this guy's twice my size. But I'm like, all right, must must be pretty soft. Right. <laughs> I drop my gloves. 
I, I, I was a weeble wobble, man. I was just holding on for dear life as his this guy hit every part of my face and head. Nice coach. Just left and right, right, left. And I'm just, just fetching him I'm, and dog. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there just holding you can on. Take him I'm, yeah. I'm looking down and there's blood on the ice and on my jersey. I'm like, I well, know that's mine because I haven't even thrown a punch for God's sakes. I get to the box and I got ice on my face. I, I, I didn't need any ice from my hands, but I got ice bags <laughs> all over my face. And I, I get back to the to the bench afterwards and I'm looking at the coach he's like what were you doing he's I was yelling no 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 <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> Oops. Not, not what I heard, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear no bell. I yeah. went. <laughs> I went. <laughs> how about you, Chris? Did you ever? Uh, do you have any good fight stories from your army days? Not really. I mean, it'd just be uh, people talking ass in a bar. And you end up outside, and it end up throwing some punches. End up on the ground, and that's it. Yeah. Once, th- like the Iraq deployment, everyone. W- Stayed out of trouble, and then yeah. after it, fighting days were kind of over. Right. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Right. But yeah, no, it's just guys being idiots. And you look at it now, it's changed so much. Yeah. Back then, it was kind of a rite of passage. You learn, oh, yeah. right. you get yeah. mouthy, or someone else gets mouthy, you handle it, you move on. But a couple ass kickings are good for yeah. you. Yeah, you yes. build character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you can't really do that because you might end up yeah. on the news. And, and, right. and, and, and to go back <laughs> to the first 10 minutes well, of it. And, yeah. and there's like, you can't, there's police officers at school now. So if you get into a fight with your buddies and a classmate, you might end up in freaking right. jail at this point. I used to fight a lot in school. What? A lot. <laughs> and so that's where, but it would just be, all right, you go home for a couple days then. Right. Doesn't it count against your absences even? Friends bring home the homework, wouldn't do it. And then, because <laughs> yeah. my, my parents didn't care. They were like, whatever. All right. What did he, oh, he disrespected you? Well, you did the right thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now in hindsight, like, okay, you don't, I mean, disrespecting, We had it, it was kind of a, Loosely used term, right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. In, uh, back in our high school, uh, John Bianchi, our assistant coach, I love the Bianchi family. Uh, he he was uh, also the he would to stand as principal the, the for a while at times and stuff. And like he would get t- so bad, like we would get so bad at each other. He would finally just grab whoever the two people were, bring them down into the, the to the fire room. We had a couple of back rooms, you know, where you keep the gymnastics mats or whatever. Put him in there and just be like, get it out. Right. And he would just leave us in there. Oh, and we man. would just go, like, you, and you'd just be exhausted, you know, after a couple minutes. It wouldn't <laughs> yeah. take more than a couple minutes right. in high school. Yeah. You'd be throwing, we'd be absolutely exhausted. You'd open the door and be like, done. All right, let's go. And it right. would be over with. Yeah, it'd be over. It was actually genius. I mean, I'm, I'm probably getting, I would have probably been getting him in a lot of trouble seeing that it's 30 some years later now. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. I think, yeah. I think statute, statute of limitations right. are safe on you, Bianca. Yeah. I hope I'm not getting you in trouble. But no, but it worked. Yes. Honestly, God, it, you know, it never went at anything bad over that. It was over with. Nothing ever happened up again in school, you know. Right. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. linger on your no. mind. Like the no. emotions are out. You yeah. know, you handled like, it and you moved yes. on. And I think. One of the other good things in the military, too, is you're always with buddies that are watching out for you. Not in the right. sense like that you jump anybody or anything yeah, like that. But they're not going to let it but, go too but far. But if, if someone's being an idiot, you take care of it. Right. You get them out yes. of there and you say, what the hell are you doing? Now, if someone tries to hurt them, then you make sure that doesn't happen. But everyone's looking out for one another. But then you do learn... To how to handle things. And it's not like, oh, you go on Twitter and say means No, you, you say stuff to people's face and you deal with it. At basic training, we had what was called one-minute madness. And if you have problems, <laughs> and the drill sergeants basically said, it was one minute or three minute madness. I can't remember. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, probably got hit there, is there, is there like a 15 or a 30-second madness? Yeah. You go in the shower... And people are watching to make sure no one gets hurt, and you just beat the piss out of each yeah. other. These two people, you handle it, you shake hands and hug after it, you move on, and then you're good. Every team has app happens every year in practice in the NHL. I guarantee it. Every year in my whole career, every year at least a couple people get fights, and that's exactly what happens. You keep it. You in-house. let it go. You let it go, and somebody starts to take advantage or whatever. Then instantly the team's right there. Did you jump? You're like, okay, that's enough. That's yep. enough. Yep. But they don't let it. It's it does not like that anymore. No. As much no. as it worked. Yeah, unfortunately, it did. <laughs> yeah, it did work. Because there's a lot of people that could use some ass kicking. <laughs> yeah, a amen. lot yeah. of people amen. that could use some ass kicking. One Minute Madness is also the name of my sex tape, by the way. <laughs>
Power Trip Morning Show. Max Fuller, Mark Parrish, and John Creasel hanging out with you. Lieber, Marnie, Rosie, and more later on in the show. But there was plenty to talk about in the world of sports. We got front page sports coming at you next. Power Trip Morning Show right after this. The Fan. Welcome back to the Power Trip Morning Show. Max Fuller, Mark Parrish, John Creasel here hanging out with you till 9, filling in for Hawk, Corey, Saucy, and Halvey as they get ready to head to the Sin City. They'll be broadcasting live from there for the rest of the week. Don't miss out on those shows. They are plenty of fun. But there's so much sports going on in the world, we got to touch on it a little bit. And also, this is a sponsored bit, so we have to do it. Yes. <laughs> Time now for Front Page Sports, presented by Holiday Station Stores. Holiday Station Stores. G- guess what, you guys? You can buy Red Bull. Two, buy two Red Bulls. Get one free at any holiday right now. So if you're dragging ass driving into work today because you stayed up too late diddling and fiddling, go on and find yourself a holiday and get yourself some Red Bull. And, you know, the Twins could have used a holiday and some Red Bull, (laughs) maybe pour it on their bats because their offense needs to wake the F up. The Twins continue to have bat problems. And I ain't talking about the kind of bat problems that you get when you drink too much. The Twins offense (laughs) was a limp for most of the night last night as they fell to the Dodgers 6-3. to Dodgers starter and Killian Murphy lookalike Tyler Glasnow tied his career high with 14 strikeouts. My God. Across... Seven scoreless innings to keep the Twins' offense offense impotent. Uh, meanwhile, Twin starter Louis Varlin gave up six earned runs across uh, five innings of work, seven hits. It's early, I get it, but Varlin now has an ERA of nine across. Oh, and they're winless two. at home. Yeah. They're oh, winless at four. home. They have scored 26 runs this season, which is second worst in all of baseball, not just the American League. They're, they've allowed like 36 runs, so the pitching, in spite of the bad performance last night against a very good team, right? the pitching is not the problem. No. It, they just, I think it's 04, 23, 24, something like that with runners in scoring position. It's their longest uh, dead drought. Drought, that's the word. <laughs> yeah. Um, since I think it was mid 2000s. My God. It, it, yeah. it, I, I mean, I know we're missing Royce Lewis, but 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 that's a lot of opportunities for other guys. That's yeah. only one bat. Especially the $35 million a year guy. Yeah. Right. He well, can't do it all. Yeah. But. No. It, well, and, and the, I mean, Oral Hershiser, early, early uh, quote of the year. Uh, candidate with it looks like we're swinging our bats underwater. <laughs> yeah. What were we doing during spring training? Right. Woof. Well, and what were you doing during the off season? Because this was a problem last year for yep. most of the w- year as well. Not spending money. Yeah. My, yeah. My yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. Chris, yeah. now we're yeah. that, 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 that off air. Just frustrating, <laughs> man. I mean, a lifelong twin fan. Like, a die hard. Absolutely love it. I was there for uh, one of the, what felt like about 500 people for Scott Erickson's no hitter with mm-hmm. my dad back in the day. And, and you know, uh, absolutely love going to the old dome, even though it was a dump. Um, <laughs> and I was finally excited again last year. It was fun. I, you know, to be going to the park and, and the playoffs, it was all this fun. And, and then it was just the biggest wah, wah, wah in the offseason I felt in 40-some years of being a Twins fan. Yeah, And it just doesn't make a lot of sense because we're used to the Twins not spending money. And then the one year they do spend money, they make leaps and bounds of progress, make right. it out of the first round. And the city is excited about the team again. And then they just decide... To go back to not yeah. spending money, right? I mean, that it's, was fun. It's, We're never doing it again. We, sh- yeah, we should have known, though. I mean, we should have seen this coming. We're the fools. I mean, if Rosen picked up, <laughs> if, if Rosen picked up a tab somewhere, we would know that the next time it's not happening. It's like Haley's comic. Well said. <laughs> well said. The Twins are now zero and four at home, as Chris said, and only have managed to score more than two runs twice. Over the last seven games, they'll look to avoid the sweep when they close out the series with L.A. this afternoon. Uh, Perry, 
The Wilds uh, were officially eliminated from playoff contention last night after they lost to the Avalanche 5-2. to two. Kaprizov and Boldy lit the lamp for the Wild, but they were no match for Colorado and Nathan McKinnon, who notched his seventh career hat trick last night, finishing the game with four points. According to our friend Michael Russo of The Athletic, the Wild will now finish the season 0-0. 10 and 1 versus the Avs, Stars, and Jets, and have only won eight of their 29 games against the nine teams above them in the West. They'll have lost 11 of their past 12 versus those teams, and the Wild will miss the playoffs for just the second time since 2013. Yeah, all those stats are not good. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a tough one. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, uh, uh, more than likely the odds-on favorite to win the MVP this year. The, the year he, Kucherov, and, and uh, McDavid are on uh, for the Art Ross, the scoring title in the NHL the, is absolutely incredible. It's been the, the, the highlight of this, uh, the, the last 15, 20 games has been watching those three it's been amazing the shows though they're putting on uh but that being said uh with the wild yeah i i it, i think everybody kind of saw this coming this year was tough uh it's 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 hard to uh understand i guess maybe for a lot of fans or people that nice don't don't get to see it on a day-to-day basis but when you're when you're struggling with the uh, with the off ice things with a coach the 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 slow start the slow start for kaprizov and the stars boldy and kaprizov get off to a slow start obviously uh the spurgeon injuries the Brodeen injuries the 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 constant core guys being down uh the the coaching change uh the the little bit of off ice uh you know it, behind the scenes stuff that happened over over Christmas or December area whatever all of this just stuff just kept adding up and adding up and it, and you just gets to a point where 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 things just aren't working well you could see it on the ice the the team was frustrated uh just things just don't work out sometimes i, I know it this is going to sound like cheesier that i'm that i'm that i'm towing a line but it, it, it's it's honest to god it sometimes very 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 good hockey teams that have high expectations have bad years and miss the playoffs and it just Happens and in, in a way, I'll tell you what. I'd rather have them much. I'd much rather have them miss the playoffs than than somehow struggle into the first round and and lose out in the first round right. and get another twenty to twenty five pick. I, I mean, it might as well. You know, I mean, I'm not saying we need to rebuild. We don't have to rebuild. But if we're at this point, might it doesn't as, hurt. It doesn't hurt. Right. I was going to say the, <laughs> the way they've been finishing off hasn't bothered me honestly at all because of that. Whether they make the playoffs or, or missing the playoffs, I kind of had this uh, in the back of my head. I think a lot of people did for for a while now because is because it was just one of those years. You could see it on the players' faces. You could see it on everybody's faces. You're like, what are we doing? You, and the harder you push, the worse it gets. And it just Truly really was one of these years. At this point, let's get a dra- higher draft pick. Moving on, forget about it. Because I tell you what, I promise you, everyone from 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 Craig on down, literally, uh, is will be so much more focused next year. This this more often than not turns out being a good thing in the long run because of this core, uh, because of Kirill Kaprizov, Matt Boldy, all these young guys going through this frustration right now. They realize one how hard it is, and two how much it sucks. And they never ever ever want to go through another <laughs> season like this in their career good. again because it's miserable. And I've been there. And it it seems like you're optimistic about yeah. the leadership of the team, 100%. which is key yeah. because then you can get out of this type of hole. It's right. They have been in this kind of perpetual, similar to the Vikings, never good enough to make a deep, deep run, never bad enough to bottom out and really kind of start over, which I think would have been good if they had done that a couple of years ago where right. you look where they're at now. So. Hopefully this is that. Yep. Now you said as far as those contracts, it's after next, next year. Yes, yeah, so we got one more year, one okay. more year. Uh, so we got to hope for no more injuries, <laughs> for especially to our decor, because we really do. Um, uh, our lineup on paper, as long as we don't have injuries, we have a team that absolutely is a playoff team and that could make a run. That could should be able to. That could easily be able to win a couple of rounds. Actually, win a Stanley Cup. I think they're miss. I think we're missing a couple of pieces, but that is because. We literally just don't have any room. There's there's no money to keep any extra players. There's no there, there's no money to bring any players in. If we do, I mean, we've watched it. We lose Spurgeon for pretty much the year, and there's just nothing we can do. Our hands are tied. Billy Garrett's hands are tied. So one more year, bear with it, and then it's going to be a whole heap load of fun.
Awesome. And the farm system. Yeah. There's I, a lot of optimism there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Wallstead, Wallstead. I mean, the goaltender, number one, and, and especially if you kind of look at this year, uh, you know, uh, Mark and Gus will probably, well, I guarantee you, they tell you that they didn't have that good of a year. I mean, uh, look at the stats and our, our, our goaltending uh, definitely cost us. But that being said, we have we have a strong goaltending core right now. Yeah, Gus was was had an off year. Uh, Fleury actually finished very, very strong. Uh, and then we got this Jesper Volstead, who literally is supposed to be an absolute freak. Uh, he's awesome. seen his size. I've seen just seen the couple games that he played, especially the, the one that uh, I, obviously the last game he played with a shutout was 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 the best game you could possibly play. He was perfect. Um, but the way he lost in that absolute seven nothing routing that Dallas gave him, and the team played n- didn't put up any fight in front of him at all. It was just a it was absolute shooting gallery on him all night long, and his demeanor never. Changed. I was so blown away with that young man. He didn't. He didn't get scared. He didn't start backing off. He he, he didn't get get terrified by the moment, uh, anything like that. Overwhelmed by it. And then he comes back. He goes back down to the American League. He just continues on his path. He keeps working on his game. He's one of the best. Best. The, he is the best goalie in the American League. Bides his time. Waits for his next opportunity. Comes in and shuts and gets a shutout. I mean, awesome. literally, you can't ask for anything more because you almost want to see a young goalie go through the adversity, see right. what he's made of, like, right. you know, and see. Like, so, like that. That kind of it was an awful game to watch, but but <laughs> just watching him, like this kid, it's, it's just pretty impressive how mentally strong this kid is, and. Literally just proved proved everybody like, hey, I can do this right now. So awesome. and guess comes back and gets a shutout. So yeah, so yes, the future is very, very bright in the next couple of years for the wild will be very exciting. Awesome. Right. Speaking of the future, you you mentioned uh, the draft and their draft positioning. Are there any like game changing kind of players where they'll be picking in the NHL draft this year? Not the depth. Not you know not without a, the 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 lot the lottery pick. There's uh, the, uh, the BU kid. He's he's he's, he's 17. He's a freshman in college. And he's absolutely the best, most dynamic hockey player in college hockey. And I'm blanking on his name right now. Of course, Celebrini. Celebrini. Uh, spectacular hockey player. Yeah, we're not going to get anywhere near him. <laughs> and, and it's not the strongest draft ever. Um, but that being said, that doesn't mean that that there weren't, we couldn't find a, a, an everyday NHL player in there. There will be some. Hopefully, the future is bright for the Minnesota Wild. And we we talk so much Wild, we didn't even get to the biggest local sports yes. story of the day. Anthony Edwards dropping a 50-piece with 50 Cent in the crowd. We'll talk about that and more in What Really Matters right after this Power Trip Morning Show. Trip Morning Show KFA and Max Fuller here with John Creasel and Mark Parrish filling in for the boys as they head over to Las Vegas. They got their shows live from Vegas tomorrow. The inmates are running the asylum this morning. Can't imagine that we were uh, Chad Abbott's first round draft <laughs> picks, That's but you, right. you get what you get. Yeah. Hey, you know, you can, you can still win a cup with a bunch of third and fourth rounders, too. <laughs> yes. That's right. Tom Brady was drafted in the hey, sixth man. round as well. Uh, and because... Hockey and Corey are not here to tell us what really matters. That is on me today. All right. So I will be assuming the role of both hockey and Corey today. How do you guys feel about that? Sure. I I, I think you do it well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll jump in if we feel <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. there's something we should add. All right, sounds good. And we didn't get to talk about it last segment, but last night it was a career night for Anthony Edwards, who scored a career-high 51 points to help the Wolves overcome an early 21-point deficit to beat the Washington Wizards 130-121 to down at the Target Center. Anthony Edwards had 30 points in the second half. Nikhil Alexander-Walker also had a huge night. Pretty much kept them in the game early. It started to get really ugly and out of hand in that first half, especially against a really, right. I mean, a, just a gross Wizards team. That was my, That's my concern now heading into the postseason is there does seem to be a little bit of cruise control with this team. That doesn't work in the playoffs. No. And, and it's these bad teams 
That I mean, my wife walked in the room and goes, I thought they were supposed to be crushing the wizard. Right. Kind of mock it because yeah. she knows that I'm I'm all in on this team right now. And they were just messing around. It it wasn't until kind of middle of third quarter and the and the wizards were doing a good job frustrating the wolves. Yeah. Anthony Edwards needs to chill out. He tied the league lead now for technical fouls. Yeah, at fourteen, he's excited. He just needs to shut up sometimes. <laughs> I mean, what a what a turn of events that Carl Anthony Towns turned out to be the the calm one this right. season of that duo, and now it's Anthony Edwards and Jaden McDaniels who are getting into foul trouble and, and technical trouble. Right, and so that part of it, and it's this is the Minnesota sports fan waiting for the other shoe to drop <laughs> thing yeah. too, but also. This team is so good. This team absolutely is capable of winning an NBA championship this year. They are 100%. capable. So just keep your head on straight. You can't mess around with any team. The first round, you're going to be playing a team that you're better than, that you're supposed to win. I want to see a lot more out of them than I have against these other inferior opponents down the stretch here. Right, especially because you might be playing against a legend like Steph Curry or LeBron James who are going to take advantage of that if you're not fully locked in. And the Wolves think they have that switch, but they're not quite there yet. I haven't seen it. And it's one thing to have it against the Wizards. It's another thing to have it against the uh, one of just a perpetual NBA Finals legend like Steph Curry or even... LeBron. I mean, the the Lakers are what eight and two in their last ten. Yeah, they've been on fire lately. Wolves handled them last uh, on Sunday night, but still, like it's just uh, I'm very worried. I am is, too. Now, now, of course, you guys know I'm no expert, uh, but the one thing I've kind of been hearing is like when it comes to the experts around the NBA is that the the Wolves haven't gone through as much a, a, enough adversity as a team in the playoffs now, which kind of confused my NHL brain because I was like, well, wait a minute, like why doesn't so does regular se- have they seen enough regular season adversity? Is I guess my question during the regular season to kind of overcome any adversity because that's all you need in the NHL. It's like as long as the team has seen adversity, right? You know, as long as you've right. had to struggle a little bit, win a couple wins. Okay, they lost four in a row during the season. They know what it feels. You know what I mean? Like I don't understand the you got to go through the adversity in the playoffs to to be a to be a world champion in the NBA. Well, and they've had they've had a couple of t- tough stretches here yeah. during the regular season. And I, with I, injuries, I mean, with Carl Anthony Towns being out. A- good chunk of last year right and then now the past month and a half that's some adversity that's the definition of adversity so so, yeah so that's a good thing yeah yes and he and it's probably on your sheet right there max but it sounds like he's getting close to returning that's what they said prior to the game they announced that uh cat has been cleared for full contact five on five basketball activities and is progressing towards his return. And lots of reports say he could be back before even the end of the regular season, which I believe is Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so he, the Cat's return is imminent. And last night it was a game that I think over the last three or four games, you've seen them really start to miss Carl Anthony Towns. Yes. Because that Ant and Cat and Nas, that's, those three are the offense on right. this Wolves team. And, you know, Jade McDaniels gets in there sometimes. Slow-Mo gets in there sometimes. But that is that, that trio is the offense for this team. And sometimes you just need a guy to go out there and get a bucket and stop the bleeding. And that's just not what they've had over these last three or four games or so. So I wonder, obviously, having never been a professional athlete, but you... You look at now, he got injured. He had to have a surgery. Sounds like it was relatively minor. Is he going to be fresh? I know there's going to be some rust. We should expect yeah. that. Yeah. But now the fact that he has got to rest his body and really kind of take care of himself, obviously doing rehab as well, right before the playoff run, I would think that that's a good thing. And last year when he came back, they they seem to gel pretty quickly with them. So yeah. the fact that they played the good majority of the first part of the season together, hopefully they can kind of pick up where they left off because he is key, and that's going to be a nice... They're playing well right now, but then you throw in an all-star like Carl Anthony Towns, that's got to really improve their chances. In hockey terms, yeah, you're horrified to face that team in the first round. Right. The, the only thing you're you're concerned with, if, if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, I guess, uh, with the long, long-term long injury, it would, would, which would I think would be the timing. Mm-hmm. Just the, 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 to get the timing back of the game, they're being getting back into that rhythm right. of the game, right? That That's the only thing you're worried about, because obviously a car, he's, he's a vet, he's a superstar, so you're not worried about what he can bring to the table. You just is he gonna is he gonna be feeling get is he gonna be able to get back into his rhythm? And that's the only right. concern. But yeah, like like you said, 
that fresh. I mean, there's some guys that I don't want to say have intentionally pulled a groin, but but have had <laughs> mysterious injuries going into the playoffs for yeah. the last month. Some big name players of the NHL, like you know, I, I'm happy where my scoring's at for this year. Let's just shut her down and be a hundred percent and fresh for the playoffs. So yeah, that I that's what it matters. Sounds like sounds to me. Yeah, I'd be excited. These are such long seasons. Yeah, they are. I'm excited now because this has been a very slow build up. We look at there was a good what I think pretty much starting in December, mid December onward. This team's either been at or near the top of the Western Conference the whole year, and we've thought, can they keep this up? Can they keep the keep this up? And now with three games remaining, they are tied at 55 and 24 with Denver. Both meet tonight. And both are on the second game of a back-to-back. Yeah. I'm it's, jacked for tonight. I'm, I'm so excited for tonight. It's basically for all the marbles. I yeah. mean, Denver has a really easy schedule finishing out. The Wolves played the Hawks and the Suns. Who The Suns, they're still trying to jockey for playoff position and probably get out of that play-in tournament. But that's... Those are two doable games. This is this is for all the marbles tonight. Bull and Denver won last night. They handled the Utah Jazz. So sets it up for a big showdown tonight in Denver for the number one seed. And, and to your point, Parrish, uh, it's, I mean, it was unlucky last year, but kind of lucky in this situation that they did have such a, a, a long stretch without Carl Anthony Towns last year. So, and it's mostly the same team as last year. So everybody knows how to get him back in his rhythm and how to, you know, Turn the team back to what it was at the beginning of the season. Yeah. It's it's just so weird seeing the fact that it is the majority of the same team as last year, and yet they are so much better this year. Yeah. I think Towns was out a lot longer last year, but they've been awesome without him this year. Is it sustainable? I don't think so without him. But uh, that part of it, I mean, a lot of it is just Anthony Edwards this year I has mean, become an absolute superstar. Yeah. Superstar potential face of the NBA. I think his time with Team USA in the summertime just took his game to a whole yeah. another level. And now he's that that elite killer that we all thought he could be. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the Timberwolves, so we'll get back to more what really matters after this. Ben Lieber joins us next. It's the Power Trip Morning Show on The Fan. The Fan.